Okay, so I'll hit tab and oops, and let me scale this to make it a rectangle. So I'll hit S for scale and Y axis and let me make this three times the width. Um, actually, let me make that six times the width. And let me scale now in the X axis, S for scale, X for X axis, and make it twice on um, that size. So this is what we're gonna start out with. And um, basically, I'm going to show you uh, the geometry that I need for this. Uh, what I need is to have a nice, like a C shape. Um, and then I'm gonna extrude out the walls of this couch from there. So let me go back over here. And the way I'm gonna do that is gonna be with uh, inset faces. So um, that's gonna be over, I believe it's one of these over here, inset faces. I'm just gonna hit I, which is the shortcut, and I'm gonna do 0.5 and then enter. So as you can see after doing that, I have this, uh, this connection here, and I'm gonna use that later on to, to curve it out with a bevel. So uh, let me just get rid of this face right here. And I'm gonna move these guys over. And you can start to see what this looks like. So I'm gonna do my first extrude. So I'll just select everything and I'm going to um, give it some, some height there. So let me do an extrude. I think I want to do one. And that's going to be the base. And the cushions are going to sit on top there. And now let me make the rest of the Mario, these. should we yes. just be watching you right now? Because I'm completely lost. Oh, yeah. You, you should definitely watch because um, there's just too much to go over in an hour and a half. So um, I'll give you guys the video when I'm done. Um, yeah, um, because it's gonna get uh, it's gonna be too much to to cover. Um, so Thank you. yeah, okay. So <clears throat> now I'm gonna extrude out these walls. So I'm gonna go to face mode hit by uh, hitting three on the keyboard, and let me grab these three walls, and I'm gonna extrude this by two units. So you can see it starts to look like a very basic couch. And last thing I'm going to do, I'm going to do another extrusion so that I can make um, these armrests uh, eventually. So I'm going to do one more extrude. E for extrude and let me do um, 0.5. And that's looking, uh, that's looking good. So <clears throat> Um, you can see I have just the, the, the bare basics here, and I'm going to start to extrude out this overhanging part of the armrest. So let me go ahead and do that right now. I'm going to grab these three faces that wrap around here. And instead of just hitting E for extrude, which is going to do that, I'm actually going to do um, Alt-E, and that allows me to extrude along the normals. So um, you can actually click and hold here, and that's the option right here. Um, uh, also, you can just use the shortcut Alt-E. Alt so I'll do that right now, Alt-E. And let me just do that. I'm going to do um, offset even, and let me do negative 0.5. OK. So you can see I'm just starting to block out the really, really basic shape of this couch. And this is where I can start to add some curvature for the armrest. Arm so to do that, I'm going to bevel some edges. Um, so I'm going to switch over into edge mode by hitting 2 on the keyboard. And uh, I'm going to grab this top one right here. If I hold down Alt and then click, I can grab the entire loop all at once. And now I'm going to hold shift and then alt again to grab the other loop. And um, I'm also going to grab this loop right here on the inside. Okay. 
So now I'll do my bevel, which is control B. Uh, it's also going to be right here, bevel. And I'm actually going to um, overshoot this. So what I'll do is I'm going to, um, this is a really nice feature in Blender, clamp overlap. So basically when I do that and I slide this, it's only going to go to a certain point and then it's just going to stop so that it doesn't overlap. And let me add another segment here. Uh, so that's looking okay. So I can start to see a really basic curvature of my armrest. And then later I'm going to extrude out the, the, the uh, cushion of the fabric there. So before I do that, um, what I've actually done with this bevel, I actually have um, some geometry that gets really close. So you can see right here, um, I have some edges that aren't right on top of each other. That's going to create some a lot of problems when I smooth things uh, up. It's going to look really weird. So I'm going to merge these together so that um, they're no longer separated. Um, so I'm going to hit A to select everything. And then I'll go to Mesh, Clean Up, uh, Merge by Distance. And just to be safe, I'm going to go to point 0.1. So it says right here, removed four vertices. And if I can jump back in here and I try to move this guy, you'll see uh, it's only just it's one edge. OK. So um, a lot of prep work, but I think we're getting there. Uh, let me just take a peek at my next step so I don't lose track of what I've done. Um, I believe the next step is going to be, whoops. <clears throat> this uh, bevel on the bottom. So let me do that, and then I'll show you what else needs to happen. OK, so let me grab, I'm actually going to go to edge mode, and I'm going to grab this entire loop at the bottom here. And then I'm going to uh, bring it down. I'll hit G for move, and then constrain to the Z axis by hitting Z and just bring it down a little bit. And then to uh, have some more curvature there, I'm going to add a bevel. So I'll do a Control B once again. And I'm just going to manually look at this and try to get it to look nice. So I think that looks OK. And so I can now start to see this nice uh, curvature. And when I add the Smooth modifier, this is going to look really nice and smooth. All right. Um, and then this is a good opportunity to explain um, what I have going on here. I have a bunch of four-sided faces. You can see all these are four-sided polygons. If I look down here, you can see uh, four vertices. And that's what you want when you use the smoothie algorithm. Um, otherwise, things are going to look weird. Uh, I'm going to select this face, and you can see the difference here. This is, has six vertices. So this is um, not what you want uh, when you're modeling. So I'm going to have to um, kind of clean things up a little bit. And before I do that, I'm actually just going to, um, I'm going to add a loop right here. Because I'll know that I'll need some more geometry to, to, to tidy this up. So I'm going to hit K for the knife tool. And I'm just going to go in here and try to get all these to be four-sided polygons. Um, this is getting kind of technical, uh, but it's good to know. So let me just finish this up here. You can do just one more. Right there is good. And right there. OK, and let me just double check to make sure I have um, faces with four sides. So you can see this has four sides. This one doesn't look like a square, but it does have four sides. So one, two, three, four, that's good. And these are all good. So now um, this is going to be the proper geometry that you want. OK, I'm actually going to work on one side here and just ignore this side, because I'm going to mirror everything over when I'm uh, about ready to. So the next step uh, that we're going to do is um, to get this cushion here. 
So I need to grab a bunch of faces for that next step. So let me go into face mode. And uh, if you have any questions, go ahead and let me know um, while I'm grabbing all these faces. It'll take a while. And I think I'll stop right about there uh, so that I can have that kind of overhang there. Um, let me see. OK. So once again, I'll do um, vertex normals uh, extrude. So that's Alt-E. And I'll extrude along normals. And I'm just going to bring it up right about there. That's going to be, let's just make it clean, negative, oops, negative 0.1. Okay, so this is just some supporting geometry. In a second here, when I add the smoothing operation, you can really see what this looks like. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to give myself some room right here because I actually have these faces uh, are terminating right there, so it's kind of hard to see. So I'm just going to drag that up a little bit. And um, I think we're about ready to move on to the next couple of steps. So um, the next thing I'm going to do is uh, let me just show you what it looks like right now with this moving um, modifier. And I'll have to do a bunch of changes. So it, you can see it's really rough and actually. I need to make sure I don't have any weirdness going on. Oh, I do have weirdness going on. I forgot some faces. That. Yeah. I forgot this face. Just be safe and grab all of these. <clears throat> That's better. All right, let me try that again. There we go. Okay. And you can see uh, we're lacking geometry, and that's why it's uh, getting really rough right there. Um, and we'll take a look at that later. I'm just going to. Uh, turn the visibility off, and we'll continue working on, on this model. All right, so um, let's do a few more things. If you look at this uh, smoothing operation, uh, there's not enough geometry over here or at the bottom to really uh, kind of solidify this. So let me just add an extrude at the very base here. Just a little bit there. I'm also going to add some uh, midpoint there just to cut it in half. And uh, let's just add a couple more cuts. And let's see what that looks like. Let me add one more over here as well. OK, so now when I add uh, this modifier, you can see it starts to take shape a little better. Uh, but we're still not where we need to be. So uh, let me turn that off. And let's add quite a few more extrudes. So I'm going to extrude this part of the fabric so it really looks like it's um, got that smoothness to it. I'm also going to extrude the inside portion here. And uh, when I'm done with all that, I'm going to start uh, beveling this to make it nice and smooth on this corner. So we go into face mode and do some of those extrudes. Grab all of these guys right here. Do an extrude. And then uh, for this portion here, I'm actually going to extrude this. But before I do, I'm going to do an inset faces um, just to give some supporting geometry there. So um, I'm actually going to ignore those. You do inset faces, and then I'll do an extrude. 
Okay. And I'm also going to add something on the bottom here to have those two little pads, as you see there. So let me grab these faces. And I'm going to do an inset faces, another inset face, just to add some supporting geometry. And let me just extrude these guys out. Do five. Okay, and now let's take a look at what this looks like with the smooth. So we're starting to look better. Uh, you can start to see some definition there. Uh, I don't have enough geometry at the bottom here, so I can sh I can show you what that looks like right now. If I do uh, an edge loop cut, so I'll do Control R, and if I add some definition there. You can see it starts to um, kind of tighten that up, which is what I want. Um, same thing for over here. Um, I can tighten this up as well, but I'm going to do that later because I need to drop in a bevel right here. So I'm actually going to do that right now. I'm going to grab this and do a Control B to bevel it. And I think that looks fine. And um, let me make this nice and smooth. And to fix this, I still need to add some geometry. But before I do that, I need to look closely at what I have right here. So if you notice, um, when I did this bevel on the corner, I created a, a face with many sides. So this is uh, another six-sided face. and. Um, I need to resolve that before I move on. Otherwise, it's going to be really hard to manage all these edge loops. So let me clean some stuff up really quick here. Um, scale X. Move this over a little bit, give myself some room. And actually, I'm going to go ahead, because I've done so much work on one side, I'm just going to go ahead and continue doing that so that I don't have to do a bunch of work several times. So. Um, <clears throat> let me first add some geometry because what I'm going to do is basically I'm going to cut these. Um, I'm going to cut up this face so that these these edges come all the way to the center, uh, and therefore they'll wrap around to the other side um, and save myself some some work. So let me just do this really quick. I think I need three of these. Oh no, I need just two of them. And then I'll use my knife tool with K. And I'll just terminate these over here. And you can see once I've done that, now I have, this is a four sided face, four sides, four sides, everything should be four sides, which is definitely what I want. Okay, let me mirror this guy over. Um, and on the y axis, whoops, and make sure that this mirror happens before the smooth. And let me turn up that smooth a little bit. And we're starting to get there. So uh, let me fix this portion right here. I just need to add an edge loop. And because I have nice geometry here, this is going to be, um, oops. I would say it would be nice and smooth, but actually uh, we need to do it on the bottom as well. So let me do that. Terminate these over here. Okay, there you go. And add a loop and tighten that up. And so that's starting to look good. The other thing I need to do is um, after doing that, and this edge looks is kind of too much information right here. It's starting to decrease in an unappealing way. So let me grab this guy and just straighten them out a little bit. So scale this in Y and just kind of move it over here. And this doesn't need to be curved either. So let me just fix that. Okay, 
There we go. It's looking decent. And I think we're going to be ready to start adding the cushions in. Um, and then if you really want to save geometry, you can um, kind of uh, merge some of this together. It's on the bottom, so no one's going to see it. So you know you can do all kinds of stuff here. I'm just leaving it as is for now. Um, and I think we're ready to make our first cushion. So um, let me see if anybody have any questions so far. Uh, it's kind of a lot to go over, but um, uh, this this workflow will get you um, where you need to go um, to kind of have a really polished model for for video games or for special effects or things like that um, to have good topology. So um, let me show you what I did here with this cushion. And it's just a cube that I used to uh, kind of smooth out. Uh, and this is this should be easy to do. I've also added some creases to the edges here. So let me go ahead and make that. So um, I'll start with the cube. And let me go ahead and go into edit mode, scale this down in Z. Let's go to point. Looks good. And, uh, next thing I'll do is let me just kind of get it in place. I'm going to do things a little more in a manual way. Um, This okay, I think that's a good starting point. Right, next thing I'll do is um, add some resolution to this. So let me just make sure I'm doing the same thing as my other cushion. <clears throat> I have three cuts. Okay. So let me do three cuts here and three cuts here. And then of course, let's see, I have one, two, three cuts on that side as well. And the reason I'm adding so much geometry here is because this is, um, I'm going to use the same cushion for the pillows and I'm going to simulate this. So um, let me go ahead and grab all of those boundary edges and crease them. So that's going to be over here, mean crease, and you can just turn it up there. I'm going to go to one. Uh, actually, let me just double check here what I have. This is oh, 0.5. Okay. Uh, let me do that. Okay, this is all 0.5. So it looks like I have these as well. So this needs to be so with the added geometry and the crease. Now, if I do a uh, subdivision surface, you can see what it looks like. Um, it has just like a tiny bit of smoothness there, and you can see I sort of bulged these cushions out a little bit so that um, it has some kind of like a box spring type of mattress. Um, so let me just bulge that out. I'm going to do that by grabbing these and scale them, scaling them a little bit. Okay, I think that looks good. Let me just do the midsection here as well. a little bit. Okay. 
All right. Let's see what else I'm missing. This is two. So I'm going to turn this up to two as well. And let's see what else I'm missing here. Uh, if you wanted to, you can grab one of these verts and use the soft selection or um, proportional editing. And if you want it to have, look like a, a used cushion that has uh, kind of a, a roughness to it, I can uh, just kind of pop that down a little bit and make it look like it's been, it's been you know, used for a while. Um, just an option there. And then let me just duplicate this guy out three times. So I'm going to use an array modifier. <clears throat> let me go in here and go to array. And I want this to go on the y axis. So let me go here. And let's make two of them. So now if I scale this out a little bit, I can really kind of fit it in there. Like maybe I should make this a little taller as well. All right, it looks fine, I think. So uh, we're almost ready to add the cushions here. Uh, let me just what I'll do. I'm just going to copy this guy and remove the array modifier and just use it like this. And I think I did on here one subdivide and then a subdivide after the cloth simulation. So um, <clears throat> let me just turn this down to one. And let me save this in case uh, this thing crashes. So um, to add a cloth, um, I'll just go over here and simulate cloth. And if I hit play, this thing should uh, start to fall down. So it's going to fall straight through the couch. I need to make this and perhaps this as well um, collision objects. So to do that, um, it's going to be down here in, I believe it's in the physics, which is right here, this button. I'll make this collision. I'll do the same for this couch. And now if I play this back, it should start to collide. So it's very soft. I need to make some changes to my cloth. Um, let me look at the one I already have. Um, should be here. So 0.3 mass. Uh, 15, 15, 5, and then I have pressure 0.6. Uh, okay. I think I just changed pressure. So let me turn that on. See what that looks like. Oop. Okay. So let me turn it down a little bit. All right. I think that's looking okay. Uh, I'm just going to make this maybe a little bit smaller. Maybe I'll move it over a little bit and uh, rotate it so that it falls nicely. And I'm going to copy this guy out over here. Uh, maybe see what that looks like. And on this one, I added a subdivision uh, after the cloth. So I'm going to do that on these guys as well. So I have the first subdivide, which will uh, go into the cloth. I don't want to make this one too high because the cloth simulation will slow down. 
So I'll keep it at one. <clears throat> and I'll just pop another one on top um, after the simulation. So you can see how that, what that looks like. Just kind of smooths it up a little bit. I'll have to uh, re-simulate for it to look accurate. Um, and there we go. So let's see what this looks like now. And because uh, I have the creases, the creases will persist through all of the subdivision levels. So you can see I still have some nice crease over there. And maybe I'll add a couple more of those pillows. And I'm doing Shift D to duplicate, by the way. Uh, now let's see what it looks like. Okay, 